The topic of this lecture is translation leukocyte buffer. Translation leukocyte buffer TLB is part of CHIP's memory management unit, and it is a hardware cache of popular virtual to physical address translation. So there is CPU, and then there's MMU, memory management unit, and within memory management unit, there is a routine that translates the page table from virtual to physical mappings. And also there are a set of caches that performs virtual to physical mapping using some type of cache. So um, when you perform a direct translation, first the TLB lookup, uh, the CPU performs TLB lookup. And if there is a TLB hit, then it finds the physical address. If there are TLB miss, then it conserves a memory and it looks at the page table to find the associated you know, physical page frame. That is the process of translating the address from virtual address space to the physical address space. Let's review the TLB basic algorithm. Uh, first, it extracts the virtual page number, and then it looks up the TLB for a given virtual page number. If it succeeds, then it checks the protection, whether it can access the page or not. If it is allowed, then it accesses the memory. And if it's not, then it raises exception. If it cannot find the associated entry in the TLB, then it access the page table. So it's pretty much the same. Uh, it gets the, it contains the address of the page table entry and it obtains the page table entry from the page table. And then it checks whether a given page is valid or not. And if it's, if it's not valid, then it raises exception. If it's not, then it inserts the given page table entry to the TLB and it retries the access instruction again. So this is important because it retries the instruction. Let's examine how a TLB can improve the performance of program execution. Consider a 10 element array and we are trying to take the summation of the elements in the array. There are 10 elements and these 10 elements are distributed saved on the three pages from both our page 6 to virtual page eight. So we have to uh, access three pages in the course of executing this, this set of programs. When we access the first entry in the array, it'll cause TLB miss. And then after performing translation, the virtual page frame, virtual page number and physical frame number pair will be inserted into TLB. So for A1 and A2, it'll uh, result in TLB hit. For virtual page 07, the first access to virtual page 7 will cause TLB miss. And then after TLB miss, all the rest of the access to the virtual page 7 will be hit in TLB. And same things happens for virtual page number 08. So out of 10 accesses, oh sorry, out of 10 accesses, there are 3 misses and 7 hits. The TLB hit rate is 70%. In reality, TLB hit rate is much, much higher than this. Um, TLB works because um, the program shows some sort of locality. There are two types of locality. First one is temporal locality and second one is spatial locality. Temporal locality uh, means the property that an instructional data item that has recently accessed will likely to be re-accessed soon in the future. And spatial locality uh, denotes the phenomenon that if a program accesses a memory address X, then the address nearby will be accessed soon. That's what we call spatial locality. Then uh, there are two ways to handle TLB miss. First one is hardware, and second one is software. Um, in CISC, like x86, um, hardware is responsible for handling TLB miss. And uh, to do this, um, hardware has to know exactly where the page table are located in memory. The hardware should work through the page table, find the correct page table entry, and extract the desired location after the retry instruction. This is what we call hardware managed TLB. As as all every hardware managed TLB do, this is pretty inflexible. And risk architecture, uh, it usually uses software managed TLB. When a TLB miss happens, instead of, uh, instead of hardware handling the TLB miss, it simply raises an exception and let the trap handler taking care of the TLB miss. 
So trap handler's code within operating system is written with the a purpose of handling TLB mess. So this is the control flow of TLB miss when the TLB miss is uh, serviced by the software. So when TLB miss happens, then it raises exception and TLB miss handler will take care of the rest. How does TLB entry look like? TLB is managed by fully associated method. Um, typical TLB has 32, 64, or 128 entries. Um, the hardware searches entire TLB in parallel uh, to find the desired translation. So, and um, this is the shape of how the TLB entry look like. There is both your page number and there is associated page frame number, and the there are the other flags. Uh, the other bits include valid bits, protection, and address space identifier. We call it ASID. We we'll call it we'll explain it later and dirty bit. Um, there is a couple of issues we need to mention. First one is context switching. Um, TLB table TLB. Uh, TLB entry takes the form of virtual page number, physical frame number, and valid bit and protection bit. So um, when a process access virtual page number 10, it is search of TLB entry. So it's a virtual page number 10, and it contains a frame number 100, and then there's valid bit, and then permission. And then soon after, the operating sch system schedules another process, and process B, and it also inserts a vulture page and physical frame number and associate valid bit. But um, here, uh, process B also access vulture page number 10. And then, of course, it is loaded into different physical frame number, and the physical frame number is 170, and then there's validated protection bit. So there is a confusion. When it access virtual page number 10, shall we choose this entry or this entry? Which is the right entry to choose when you perform address translation? So there's no way to distinguish which entry is the right entry for translation. To handle this issue, we add uh, a field called address space identifier, ASID. It's a field in TLB and it is last few bits of process ID. We cannot, we don't have to copy on type process ID in the address translation table or TLB entry, but last few digits of a process ID is used to distinguish the right TLB entry we have to use. That what you call ASID. So this type of TLB is used, uh, termed as tagged TLB. Um, there's another case. When two process share a page, for example, uh, process one is sharing a physical page 101 with process two. So they have different virtual page number, but actually they point to the same page frame. So uh, if we expl properly exploit, exploit the page sharing, then um, we can effectively reduce number of physical frames that can be used. So um, here, uh, process one is sharing the physical page one one with process two. P one maps this page onto tenth page of its address space, and P two maps this page to the fifth page of its address space. So um, it is possible that here we share a physical page. Well, the number of entries in TLB is limited. As we said, it's 32, 64, or 128. So when a process generates TLB miss, we have to bring in a new TLB entry. And in most cases, we have to kick out some of the TLB entries by re to replace, to, to accommodate the new one. So we need to have uh, some type of replacement policy. There are a number of replacement policy, the least recently used. In LLE approach, a victim entry that has not recently been used, it takes advantage of the locality in memory reference stream. Consider this memory reference pattern. 
is this is um this is let's say this is butcher frame butcher page number seven zero one and two this is reference string and this is tlb so let's let's look at how llu works when when a program um refers uh page number seven then it it results in page mess so seven is brought into memory and then again it concerts zero so if seven another miss happens and zero is brought into memory and we it access page number one and it brought into memory so there are three misses and then again it accesses butcher page number two then there are three pages in in, in tlb and then there's seven zero one so we have to uh kick out some of some of these three pages but if you look at this one then uh, least recently used is represents the page that hasn't been used recently and page 7 hasn't been accessed recently for a long period of time so we select 7 as a victim and overwrite victim seven, overwrite those element then now um, the program accesses page number 0 and it is page number 0 is already on the TLB so it generates hit and then there's page number 3 is accessed and then there's no page number three in in this page frame so we have to select one of two zero one as victim to replace three out of two zero one uh page number one hasn't been accessed for long so we select one as victim and it kicks out one seven zero and one in this way uh we replace the existing entries and bring a new one so there are a total of 11 TLB misses in this example. In this, in this slide, uh, we see a real TLB entry. This is TLB entry of MIPS R4000. Um, a TLB entry is 64, 64 byte, 64 bit. It has 19 bit BPN and 24 bit physical frame number. And then there is a flag uh, that is used for pages that are globally shared among processes. And also there are 8-bit uh, address space identifier. And then there are a few flags such as dirty bit, valid bit, coherence bit. So this is the structure of TLB entry.